menu. Good morning, everyone. We are not live at Bashers today. Had to pre-record our show because I am in Rochester. And right now I should be on the air on Power 96 with a Cannon Falls Bomber Section 1AA baseball game. They're playing the La Crescent Lancers at Mayo Field in Rochester. And our coverage supposed to begin at 10, or actually just before 10. The first pitch, 10 in the morning. I, I've never been a big fan of morning baseball games, especially in section playoffs. I think it makes absolutely no sense. The earliest you should start, in my opinion, is noon. Let them get, you know, some good rest before they have to go out and play baseball. And one of these two teams is going to have to play two games today because whoever does not win that game has to turn right around and play at 1 o'clock against a team that's coming out of a win. That's the hardest possible game to try and win, and we've seen it many, many times over the years. If Cannon Falls does not win the first game, the second game will not be on the radio. We decided we are not doing elimination bracket games. It's just too many games. If Cannon Falls wins, of course, we'll be back on Tuesday. They would have to be defeated twice in order not to go to the state tournament. If two games are required on Tuesday, we would have both those games on because they'd be playing for a state tournament berth. Speaking of state tournament berths, the Cardinals of Faribault Bethlehem Academy are going to their first ever state fast pitch tournament. We are so excited for them. We know the times that are scheduled for them to play. Now, quite often, the state softball tournament is at least an hour behind because they don't typically put enough time in between games. That's been the tradition. And if you get rain delays and all that good stuff, so these are not etched in stone. I mean, they're on the bracket at these times, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to start at these times. On Thursday, 1.30 and 8.15 are the start times for the Class A schools, all of them. That includes not only BA, but all of the other Class A schools. The seedings should come out later this morning. Before noon, anyway. I'll try to keep an eye on them on my phone while I'm broadcasting on Power 96. And if I get them, I will certainly share them with folks. But I'll keep in mind I'm calling a game, right? So my attention should be on the Cannon Falls La Crescent game and not on finding seeds for the fast pitch. But I will keep my eye on it. And if I do get them, I will share them with you. For sure, they'll be up before the end of the weekend on our website, kdhlradio.com, also power96radio.com. You'll see them there, I'm sure, before the end of the weekend. If Cannon Falls does not win that first game, again, we will not broadcast the second game, but I'll stick around and let people know what's happening. I'll probably tweet out updates. I obviously am hoping that the Bombers win because then they're sitting and waiting and only have to win one more game to go to state. That's the situation the Cardinals of Bethlehem Academy were in earlier this week on Thursday. On the first day of June, they had an incredible winning streak. Their only loss during the regular season was to the number one ranked Randolph Rockets out of the same Gopher Conference. Randolph is at state two. And I could see a scenario where Randolph plays Bethlehem Academy the first game. Now, if I were seeding, I would definitely seed B.A., you know, one of the top five seeds. They seed the five, and then they random draw the rest. There is talk about seeding all the way through, which is what I've advocated ever since they started seeding. If you're going to seed, seed. Well, they didn't want the number eight seed to feel bad. Uh, Sorry. I don't think anybody's going to feel bad about being a number eight seed in a state tournament. You know how many teams would love to be at the state tournament? I mean, seriously. So that's that's the uh, skinny there. And I, as I said, would seed Bethlehem Academy in the top five because they only have two losses. Now, there are those that would argue, and I talked to a couple of state tournament coaches who told me that they don't really even look at the record they look at who teams play and they said the cardinals simply did not play enough super quality teams 
Meaning that's Kenyon Wanamingo in the subsection championships. Kenyon Wanamingo is uh, about a 500 team. They faced Hayfield in the section title. Hayfield was about a 500 team. This was pointed out to me by a couple of the coaches that are coaching at the state tournament and do the seeds. They said they look at the quality of schedule more so than the record. So if all the coaches go by that route, Cardinals might not get a seed. They might be a random draw. As I said, I would definitely give them a seed because, well, I've seen them during the course of the season. When they play their best, there aren't too many teams that are going to beat them. The key words are play their best. Section finals, I'm sure they would tell you they did not play their best. They did persevere and win their last game 4-1 to one after losing to Hayfield 3-2 to two in the previous encounter, needing to win one game to go to state. That's exactly what they did on Thursday. I talked to Coach Scott Trump after the game, and I should have had my recorder out when we talked, but I didn't, and I would have aired that here. But the coach told me that he thought they, the team had a sense of relief after winning that game as opposed to being super elated because, <laughs> there, well, there was pressure on them, right? They're a state-ranked team. They have only... Well, going into the first game, they had only one loss in the regular season. That was it. They now have two losses heading into the state tournament. Phenomenal season regardless of what happens at state. They played June 8th, June 9th. I gave you the schedule June 8th. Depending on what happens on Thursday, that determines whether they play or not on Friday. If they lose two games, and I've followed a lot of teams in their first year at state, I seem to recall some Broto Mazeppa many years ago. I got to broadcast many of their state tournament games back in the day. And the first year they went, they did not get out of the first day. And I remember uh, Coach Nelson telling me, gee, Gordy, you were right. Because I told him, I said, everybody up here can play small ball and the pitching is phenomenal. And he said, you were right. We had something we got to work on is the small ball. So we'll see what happens. As I said, if they don't win a game on Thursday, they would be done for the tournament. If they win the first game and lose the second game, they'll be playing for third place at 3.30 on Friday. Again, these teams are, these times are in the bracket, but it's not necessarily when they'll play. 1.30 would be the consolation championship should they lose the first game and win the second. And the state championship would be 5.30 on Friday. Those are the times that are in the bracket. But again, quite often, they're an hour or so. Heck, the year uh, Randolph won the state title a couple years back, I seem to recall Roy Koenig, who did the call for us because I was up at state baseball. Remember, they were the same time back then. Uh, I think it was 2021, after the year after COVID. In any event, the... Uh, yeah, the game was a few hours late. They didn't start till like 10 at night, you know, rain delays and long games and all that good stuff. So even though these are the times that they have in the brackets, as I said, they are not etched in stone. Faribault Falcon baseball team saw their season come to an end. They ended up in the elimination bracket of the Section 1-3A baseball tournament. They lost to the number one seed Northfield in their first game, 8 to nothing. And then they were defeated by the Austin Packers in the elimination bracket. That ended their season. But Charlie Lechtenberg stopped out of Bashers a couple weeks ago and told us he really enjoys coaching these young men. Sometimes we, and I include myself, put too much of an emphasis on winning as opposed to enjoying the game, enjoying the camaraderie. Those are the things that we grasp and hold on to in future years. Yeah, I can remember a play or two in my high school career, but the thing I remember most are the good times that we had together, the camaraderie, the friendships that were developed because we participated in something together. 
And for me, anyway, athletics also being in band, in choir. I was in virtually every high school play when I was in high school. All of those events, for me, I learned more out of those, I thought, than I did in the classroom. There's just more opportunities to develop a friendship in those scenarios. Right? The folks at Bashers are having a garage sale noon to 6 Friday, noon to 6 Saturday, noon to 6 Sunday. Yep, big garage sale. Coming up, this is next weekend, not this weekend, but next weekend is the big garage sale, a combination sale. There are a a few places that are throwing their stuff together in the parking lot of Bashers. This is next weekend, next Friday, June the 9th, from noon to 6, noon to 6 Saturday, and noon to six Sunday. That's next weekend, big garage sale. They're gonna have all kinds of items there in the parking lot at Bashers. If you have any questions, you can give them a jingle here at Bashers. Don't forget, every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it's volleyball. You can stop out on the patio, enjoy a cold drink, delicious plate of ribs, or one of their awesome burgers. I love their bourbon burger, by the way. Every Friday, the fish fry continues. All you can eat, delicious fish. Their homemade tartar sauce is out of its world good. At Bashers, the Farrell Bowl Center, we appreciate their hosting our show. Next week will be our final show at Bashers, and I'm hoping to have a lot of people stop out because the state golf tournament, the state Track and field tournaments are being held this next week during the week. The high school league doesn't like having things on weekends unless it's, you know, basketball or football. So everything will be done on Friday except baseball. So we would not be able to have, uh, had the baseball team made it to state, we would not have been able to have them on unless we did a special show, which I'm sure if they did, we would. So again, that garage sale is next weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The hours are noon to 6 each day. Obviously, the earlier you get there, the better selection you have. That's the way garage sales work, right? (laughs) The earlier you get there, the better the selection of the sales, the sale items. So, as I said, Bethlehem Academy is at the state tournament. We will have their games on KDHL radio unless there's a, some sort of a technical issue or something. That's probably where they would stay. Uh, possibly, depending on how the seeds shake out, we possibly might be covering the Randolph Rockets. If that were to happen, the Cardinals would be on Power 96 radio if they're playing at the same time. We'll see how the seeds come out, Right. All the seeds come out. If they play each other the first round, obviously we'll have that game on Thursday and then go from there. But the plan is to cover the Cardinals, whatever games they have, at the state fast pitch tournament. Oh, so much fun to see the local team get there. You know, we've covered the state tournament many, many times over the years. I enjoy covering whoever it is. Ambrota Mazeppa, Cass and Manorville, we were there a few times for them. We've covered, uh, let's see, who else have we had on the airwaves? Obviously, Randolph a few times over the years. I believe Hayfield, we did them a year or two. And uh, other area teams that make it to the state tournament. But obviously, this is the first ever birth by the Cardinals of Bethlehem Academy. It was so much fun to see them jumping up and down and pretty excited and getting ready to go to the state tournament in North Mankato, Caswell Park, North Mankato. 
I'm going to take this opportunity to share something with you that I have said for the last few years I would love to see, and that is to have the championship games at the Fast Pitch Tournament be moved to the University of Minnesota softball field. The guys get to play this year at CHS field for the state title games. In the past, they played at Target Field. Evidently, it just didn't work out this year. Or they decided that CHS would be a better venue, and I agree with that. Target Field is massive, right? And you get, at the most, 1,000 people in there. 2,000, maybe, if they're the big schools. It's, it's pretty, pretty big. 2,000 people doesn't make much noise in that big place. But you go to CHS Field, the seating is much, much less. And so it'll feel more like a state tournament. That's just my own opinion. I think it's a good move to have the state championship games at CHS. But, again, they play on Thursday, Friday, and then the championship games are played on Monday. I don't know why they don't follow the same format with fast pitch. Quite honestly, why don't the ladies get to have their day in the sun like the gentlemen do in their state championship games? The state championship games would be better served, that sport would be better served, if they were to play them at the University of Minnesota softball field. Just my own opinion. And you'd each have your own game in the sun. Now they play them, I think they, uh, probably a half hour, they offset them by a half hour. And you really couldn't watch every one if you wanted to. I mean, you could, but it's not the same as watching the whole game and concentrating on each game as it should be. Class A, you don't see them doing that in basketball. I guess you do see them doing that in volleyball. Again, that's a girl sport. Basketball's girls too, as well as boys. Anyway, that's just my thought. You don't have to agree with me. You might say this is perfect. Everybody at the same field, Caswell Park, North Mankato. You can watch whatever games you want in terms of the state title. As I said, I think they offset them by about a half hour. They don't even give each team, or each game, I should say, their own couple hours. They share. Now, there are multiple fields there, and that's why they do it. But it's like they just want to get it over with. As opposed to... This is the state title game. Let's give them their space, just that game. I hope you're following my thinking here, but I do think that would be the, the best way. That's just my own opinion. After you determine who's in the state championship games, you come back on Monday like you do for baseball. Come back on Monday and have your state championship games. A couple of games is no big deal. All these fast-pitch teams play in tournaments. So back-to-back games are no big deal. That's not the reason I would like to see this happen this way. I just think it's fairer, right? Again, the guys play Thursday, Friday, come back Monday for the title games. There's no reason why you couldn't do that for the fast-pitch. My guess is, and this is just a guess... University of Minnesota is a public university. So they do get funding from the state. They might not even charge for use of the fields for those state championship game that would happen. Class A, Class AA, Class 3A, Class 4A. I would start at noon. Fast pitch, the beauty of the sport of fast pitch is it's a quick game. So you'd have two and a half hours that you'd put in there for the game. That's pretty rare. You have a a two-and-a-half-hour fast pitch game. So that should typically give you enough time to prep the field for the next state championship. And I would rotate them. I wouldn't have them the same time every year. That's pretty much what they do with the baseball. I would rotate them so that Class 4A, the biggest schools, don't always get the primetime game. You rotate it But the first year, you would have Class A at noon. You would have Class AA at 2.30. You would have Class 
3A at, what would that be, 5 o'clock? And Class 4A would be at uh, 7, 7.30. That would be the way I would do it. And then, as I said, each year I'd rotate. The next year, Class 2A would be at noon, and then 3A, and then 4A, and then single A would be in prime time. And you just rotate it each and every year. I think they should do that with baseball as well. It shouldn't be just the big schools that get to play in prime time, especially in a big venue like that. Uh, there's no reason to do it that way. But that's how it is done. I'm hoping next week we get Dave Weber out here at Bashers, the Farrell Bowl Center. You never get a bad meal at Bashers. The food is phenomenal. It's always good. Never had a bad meal. As you know, I love their ribs, and most people that like ribs enjoy their ribs because they are very, very good. I remember Jerry Kess back in the day telling me that he had some people from Texas up. Texas, of course, known for their barbecue, right? And these people from Texas said these are better than ribs we've had in Texas. And uh, I would happen to agree. I, a few years ago, went down to visit my aunt and uncle who live in Rockwall, Texas. That's a suburb of Dallas. It's just east of Dallas. So I visited with them. And they said, where would you like to? This is our treat. We want to take you out to eat. Where would you like to go? I said, well... Texas is famous for their ribs. Let's try a ribs place. So they took me to, uh, in their opinion anyway, the best ribs place in Rockwall, Texas. They were delicious, don't get me wrong. But I did prefer the Bashers because I love their sauce. Their sauce is phenomenal. And I'm just kind of a sauce guy. Now, my brother, for example, he likes the Bashers ribs, but he prefers the uh, dry rub which is what I had in Texas at that place. They were delicious again, but they just weren't Basher's ribs. So before I go again, I want to plug next weekend at Basher's in their parking lot. They're going to have a massive garage sale. As I understand it, there are a few different families that are doing this. The Claytons, the owners of Basher's, the Farrah Bowl Center, are one of the families, along with a couple other families, that will be doing this garage sale in the parking lot at Bashers. And the hours are noon to 6 Friday, noon to 6 Saturday, and noon to 6 on Sunday. It's a big garage sale. Don't forget to head on out if you enjoy watching volleyball. They have volleyball every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday in their back volleyball courts. You can sit on their deck Enjoy a cool beverage and a delicious sandwich and watch the volleyball every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. They have an all-you-can-eat fish fry every Friday. All-you-can-eat fish fry every single Friday at Bashers. And their fish, well, Jerry always used to say it's like eating candy, and he's right. <laughs> it was. And they kept the same recipe. Why mess with something that's good? Homemade tartar sauce. Oh, my gosh, that's good. Let's get you caught up on the Faribault Lakers. The Lakers played Milroy last night. Tomorrow, they're playing New Prague out at Bell Field. A 2 o'clock first pitch. The New Prague Orioles will be in town. On Wednesday, they host Webster. A 7.30 first pitch. Next Friday, New Market comes to Faribault. A it says here 10 in the morning first pitch, which I would highly doubt, but that's what it says on their schedule. And then Sunday, they host St. Benedict, a 2 o'clock first pitch. Earlier this week against Prior Lake, they picked up a 2 nothing win. Last Sunday, they lost 3-2 to two to a very good Union Hill team at home out of Belfield. Last Friday, they traveled to Springfield. What was that all? They lost 5-3 to three last Friday. So they had two losses after opening up the season with four wins. Then they defeated Prior Lake. As I said, they played Milroy last night. They don't have results of that game on their Game Changer app here for, that I'm looking at. 
And again, tomorrow, they host New Prague. The Orioles will be in town. A 2 o'clock first pitch. This is a great brand of baseball, folks. And you don't have to pay the big bucks or pay up at the uh, the big stadiums. So get on out there. I'm planning on going. I, I try to get to the Sunday games when they're here, if possible. You know, sometimes you have other things to do. But I would highly recommend you head on out because, as I said, this is a great brand of baseball. The Faribault Lakers. They got some new faces. Jake Patrichka's out there, former major leaguer. And I think he's having fun because he's playing in the field. He obviously didn't do that when he was a relief pitcher in the major leagues. He's pitching, but he's also playing in the field. He's grabbing a bat. And uh, Jake, always a really good athlete, obviously hasn't lost any of that athleticism. He's a bit older, but we all get older, right? That's kind of the nature of life. So again, next weekend, don't miss the garage sale out at the Bashers parking lot, noon to 6 Friday, noon to 6 Saturday, noon to 6 Sunday. Next weekend, our wrap-up shows for the Farrell Bowl Coaches Show out of Bashers, the Farrell Bowl Center. And I'm hoping to have a great crowd, get some kids out here and have some fun. Have a fantastic rest of the weekend. Of course, Damn Days is going on over in Morristown. It was fun to announce the parade last night. A hundred units in the parade. It was a blast. It always is. It's a great celebration. All of our area community celebrations are fantastic. You know, it's summer.